but here she is back via Skype, Leanne McAdoo. For TV viewers, there she is. <laughs> I got to say, it made me happy uh, to uh, see her there, so she'll be back with us uh, more a lot soon. Uh, I asked her what she wanted to get into. She wants to get into the collapse of CNN, the Nothing Burger, uh, the uh, Mika Brzezinski stuff, and that's exactly where I wanted to go. So here is Mika freaking out, you know, saying all this stuff when they're the ones that started the whole thing. Uh, it's incredible. Here it is. He picked the wrong schoolyard to come into. I have to tell you this. Uh, you know, I, uh, I'm not an employee of NBC, so I can. I'm going to go thug here. Okay, I'm sorry because because she's a good woman, she's a great mom, and he's a pig. He's a pig, and I find what's ironic. He's physically disgusting to look at. I mean, that's what I find ironic about. <laughs> the way he starts to always go after other people's physical attributes. So beyond, he's not mentally okay. And what, this is a man with nuclear codes. We have to start paying attention to it. And he's disgusting to look at. I, I know everybody's going to say, Donnie. But no, I don't no, 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 no. So, on so many levels. No, no. Uh, let me tell you. Disgusting, vulgar man. And to talk about women that way, and the irony is that I can't, you, 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 you physically, Lee, and you are doing disgusting things to this country. But Donnie, doesn't it lower again? Yes, the discourse I'm, to say for me, what you yes. said about his physical appearance. You know what? It absolutely does. And maybe it's time that we all stop tippy toeing. I'm taking the low ground here. You know what? The way he behaves himself as the president. And I'm sorry, I probably won't be on this show again. But sorry, put the shades Please back. Please bring on. yourself back. Serious. You discredit yourself, punk. Now I'm going to get Leanne's take on this. But they're calling him a dictator. They're having guests on saying kill Trump. They're attacking his family. They're making all this stuff up. We can, we're going to play some of those clips coming up. And then she says she's scared. It, it's kind of like when the CNN humorist uh, came out and, and did the simulated chopping Trump's head off. And all he said is, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Then she said, Kathy Griffin said, I'm scared. You bullied me. I mean, they attack him. They shoot congressmen. The liberals are calling for war. Michael Moore is calling for uprisings. And then Trump says, oh, they begged to meet with me. She was pathetic from her facelift, dripping blood, uh, which which is reportedly true. She shows up with some bandage on her head. And, and so he says this back to them, and they act like it's the end of the world, and he's this horrible-looking pig. Uh, wow, Leanne McAdoo, great to have you back with us. Good job taking care of your grandma. Glad to hear that went well. What do you make of all this? Well, Alex, thank you for having me. It's great to be back on the show and see you. But, you know, I'm kind of enjoying being able to sit back and not have to instantly react to this political tennis match we've got going between the media uh, and following Trump's Twitter. Um, that's all the news. That's all anyone is talking about are his tweets and just completely ignoring so many other really important things that are going on in this country. Frankly, I wish Trump wouldn't have tweeted out about Mika's facelift. I mean, it just takes away from his achievements. It takes away from his accomplishments. It gives the media more justification to not talk about the good things that he's doing for this country. Are you saying you should get rid of his Twitter? Uh, I mean, you're not saying you're rid of his no. Twitter. You're saying, no, no I tend to agree with you. I mean, why didn't he celebrate the Supreme Court backing him up? Or why didn't he go out for CNN and all these fake news videos? He did, but why he... he why is he going after Mika and Psycho Joe? I know why. They've burrowed into his life. They've gotten close to his family. Right. You know, and, and this is the same thing Melania Trump says. If you hit him, he's going to hit back two times, you know, ten times harder. Uh, that's just how he is. He's 70 years old now. He's not going to change the way he is. 71. Um, at this point. Right. I mean, he is who he is. And that's why the people voted for him, because they appreciate that he doesn't Hold me punches, and you you know you you know exactly what you're going to get with him. Well, let me uh, say this then: you've been there in himself, Florida. But... You take care of your grandma. <laughs> you also spent some time in Europe. Just the last month or so, not being in the Infowars pressure cooker, taking the sabbatical, which you certainly deserve. I want one too. Uh, what would you say about the state of the world right now? Well, obviously, what an incredible month for me to just <laughs> keep quiet. I mean, so many tragic things happened uh, over the last month and a half, of course, many big things. Something that was really uh, impressed upon me when I was in Portugal, um, I would talk to so many people, so many different people uh, from Germany, the UK, uh, Portuguese people as well, uh, Spain, everyone instantly, where are you from? Texas, oh, who'd you vote for? Everyone wants to talk about politics. And what I found really frustrating is that everyone is getting their international news, you know, our U.S. news from CNN. So they're getting a perspective of the United States and the American people filtered through CNN, which is basically pushing this message that 
Trump only won because Americans are racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, uh, impeach, impeach, and that's what they kept. Which asking. shows CNN is the most anti-American broadcasting Absolutely. system that's just sick. It, they're so anti-American, and so, th but people don't realize that on the outside they think we're the free. Uh, the free world over here, we've got this free press. And i that was what I just kept trying to explain to them. It, that's no longer true. All of our uh, main media outlets where we used to get our information vital to our uh, nation is now being filtered through these papers and, and media outlets that are owned by either a single person um, or a corporation. People that don't like the president, uh, that actively worked against him and getting Hillary Clinton elected, and they're all upset that those efforts failed. Well, that's my next question. Trump out. You've got Zuckerberg, you've got the CIA, you've got the, the, the kingpin, Carlos Slim, the Mexican kingpin. It's all these globalists, the ultra-rich against Trump and America. Do, do, don't, doesn't the left get their siding with the establishment? Right. Well, that's the thing that's funny is that now they're anti-government and they're pushing all the conspiracy theories. It's really funny how that it's kind of flipped around where they were really trying to push that message that these anti-government folks are really dangerous to the democracy, but now it's them. Um, but it's I think it's really interesting that they're taking Trump's latest tweet um, and now trying to invoke the 25th Amendment. That's their big thing that they're going to do and say, well, he's clearly unfit to be and by the way, Stone got that from high level sources two months ago and broke it. That's what Mika and that's what Psycho Joe are saying is he's mentally ill. I mean, the guy, mm -hmm. that guy has incredible stamina at like one in the morning. The guy sleeps four hours. He really does. He's so smart. Just when I personally talked to him, I, I mean, he, he finishes my sentences. And so the, to claim at 71, he is senile or mentally ill is the opposite. So they can say he's senile, mentally ill, but, but he can't say Mika has a low IQ. Right. Or they can sit there and make fun of his tiny hands. What For whatever reason, that seems to be their favorite insult. Um, or talk about how he's overweight and how we need to get his blood pressure tested and, and make sure he's not eating too much fast food. I mean, they're constantly making fun of his appearance. But if, God forbid, he says something about someone else, um, you know, that's, that's all the news. And there's actually a recent um, a chart from the Media Research Center kind of analyzing the amount of coverage that uh, ABC, CBS, and um, NBC were giving to Russia. Almost 400 minutes in the last month on these evening newscasts about Russia, five minutes to our jobs and economy, five minutes to tax reform. No, I'm sorry, less than one minute on tax reform, uh, infrastructure spending. All of these things are completely being ignored while they are whipping up this nothing burger, which is this Russiagate controversy. I think sure, and, and 91 to 90, hand, right, exactly, and then 91 to 93 percent of the coverage, Harvard admits, Yale admits in two different studies, one says 91, one says 93. I mean, it's more like 99. It is all negative, so just ask yourself, what is he doing that makes him so mad? But you said something really important that I've meant to address. So I've seen it online. I've seen it on TV. I've seen it in a bunch of newspapers. They go, oh, Jones hated the government and wanted a violent uprising until Trump got in. Well, A, I didn't hate the government. I didn't want a violent uprising. Our country was totally run by globalists. As soon as we got somebody in that actually tried to actually make the decisions and get power back, to the American people, of course I support that. I'm not some loser that just sits, wants to sit back as a permanent person complaining. I want to make things better. I'm a father. I'm a citizen. I'm a human. So it, it adds more credibility that when the police start doing a better job and when the military steps up and when citizens step up and when Trump does a better job, when Trump bombs the fake Syrian you know, deal and they're trying to false flag him into a war, I say, that's bad, Trump. And then Trump responds three days later and says, we're not going to do this. So... I see him as so responsive is what's, I just can't believe how much good he's done, quite frankly, Leanne. And just imagine if Hillary was in, what it would be like? Oh, every day I think about that. And here now I'm living in Florida and I'm surrounded by a bunch of elderly people who are quite progressive. They come down here from New York and other places. And of course they want to talk about politics. And it's so easy for me to, to say to them, well, I'm much happier with the Trump than I would have been with Hillary Clinton. And none of them can argue with the fact that she was a terrible candidate. And I mean, at the end of the day, I'm sorry, if you think Trump's such a bad guy, well, your candidate lost to him.
So that says, speaks volumes about what a terrible candidate she was. And then just the fact that we're overlooking all of the corruption and the collusion and things that, that went into trying to get her elected. I mean, there's so many things that are not being addressed because we're being forced to ping pong back and forth uh, the nation is being forced, those people who turn into mainstream media are being forced to just constantly pivot back and forth the, between the uh, media versus Trump. And they're not getting any information that's actually serving them. That's why you have a, a lot of Democratic Democratic leaders, <laughs> they're, they're kind of calling on the, their people to stop pushing this Russia thing because uh, Trump taking us out of the Paris Climate Accord they weren't prepared for that. They didn't have any response for that because they hadn't been rallying up their protesters and rallying up their troops to even think about that Paris treaty. They they had nothing to say about it. So well, that's it my happened, next exactly. Kind of that's my next question. How can they be calling to kill Trump, murder Trump, hashtag hunt Trump, Democratic officials? They're actually trying to organize this. Then they turn around and say it's Trump's fault. Congressman Scalise got shot. Right. And you would think after something like that, where we're actually seeing uh, political violence now festering up and, and people are actually now actively uh, getting violent with their political rhetoric, they're taking it now to the streets, you would think, okay, are they going to tone it down a little? No, you have Chris Matthews talking about uh, Trump needing to take out Jared Kushner, get rid of his son-in-law. I mean, this danger it's dangerous. And that makes me support Kushner now. I don't think Kushner's a bad guy. <laughs> But I know he's been reportedly leaking to uh, or talking to Scarborough. He should know Scarborough's not his friend. Right. Leah, let me ask and you this because it's, it's a big spectacle. Uh, and again, I haven't, you know, you know, talked except for some text messages and a couple calls in the last month or five weeks. You took care of your grandma and went to Europe. Well-deserved time. But be honest. I mean, obviously, I look like hell, bad lighting. I need to lose some weight again. I've, I've kind of been slacking. But the editing of, of a stammering, mindless Alex Jones, the Megyn Kelly was it the right decision to do the interview? I mean, I did it because I was going to, you know, obviously try to expose the hit piece. It blew up in her face to a certain extent. People agree that we came out on the on the better side, but I don't think it's because I'm that good. I think it's that she's that bad and the dinosaur media is in such crisis. But cor correct me if I'm wrong. What is your real analysis of that? Well, I, I was really glad that you did the interview. I thought it was definitely going to be a hit piece, but I was willing to give her a chance because I did, you know, respect Megyn Kelly. And I, you know, you used to say, oh, don't worry about her. You you can do, you can be better than her or whatever. I, I looked up to her. Um, so I, I was giving her a chance to see if she- Lynn, you are a million character. times better than Megyn Kelly. Please, You're for God's sakes, <laughs> stop, stop it. You're like a super smart girl next door that's awesome. I well, mean, Megyn so Kelly much. was very robotic. I'll just tell you this. She's very attractive physically. I had zero attraction to her, though. I don't mean that mean. It was like there wasn't a woman there. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, she's definitely sort of toughened up and changed a lot. I think she took a lot of heat for giving Trump those those uh, pretty hard-hitting debate questions initially. And, you know, you asked me this at the time as a woman. You know, I thought she handled it pretty well. And frankly, at the time, he did say those things. And she was brave enough to say, well, if you're going to be the president, respond to this. But she got a lot of flack for that, which, you know, understandably so. So I was interested to see, would she be fair? Would she be balanced? Would she really actually allow people to see who Alex Jones is and why he's so important, why he has so much reach? But of course, it turned into a hit piece. And I was just really glad that you guys recorded it because I know that that's not something that we've ever done. Um, and I was about to say, because folks are now saying I'm, I'm recording everything. Have we ever recorded somebody surreptitiously? No, no. And that's where we always joke about it because, I mean, obviously there's cameras all over the place. But, you know, it's I mean, this is not something that you're you know that there's going to be a hit piece, so you just kind of take it in stride and give them your honest, authentic Alex Jones, and um, they'll spin it and do whatever. But, you know, I, I just don't think they were expecting to have her just so blatantly lying, have that recorded and blow up in her face. And to me, it's like, really? <laughs> Alex Jones will be the one thing that finally undoes Megyn Kelly? I mean, that was incredible to see. Just I don't think it's that. I just think that they, the public sees us as honest, which we are. We make mistakes. We'll tell people. It's, here's an example. The headline said, Playboy reporter in the, in the Daily Mail confronts, you know, uh, press secretary in outburst, but he was with a syndicate paper 
he wasn't a playboy. So I'm going, look at this dumbass playboy reporter. And then later I'm watching at night and it's going syndicate news columnist. So, I mean, we make mistakes like that, but it's like little stuff like that. With them, we don't have the time and energy to lie. We're like live. We're really saying what we think. There's no teleprompters. With them, they'd spent two weeks manipulating this thing. And my problem is we have all the audio. Rob is like, dude, I've been working on this like 50 hours and I can't put it out because it takes hours to go back through all the audio, find what you said, then match up the points. It's going to come out soon. It's just, it's, it's, it's insane. She would take, we've got edits of hers, Leanne, that are four different clips over an hour and a half. You understand, they would take over an hour and a half, four things I said, that's why even mainstream media admitted it was jump cuts, because it would like go, and I do this, and then it would cut back to her and like cut to a wide shot and all this, because they were literally like taking, you know, a, a news article and cutting out each word like a refrigerator game. Right. And then like re rearranging them. I mean, it's that bad. So right. here's and the I, question, why do they think they could get away with that? Well, and I'm also curious how much of that last minute scrambling editing took place once you released the piece and kind of scooped Megyn Kelly. I wonder how much they went back and tried to edit more to make you look really bad and really villainous. So that might not have even been the original piece that they were working on, but then once once she got scooped, uh, then they were like, okay, well now we've really got to, now we really have to hit them. You know, so that's a good point because she said, understand. That, 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 don't, oh, don't worry, other folks have taken it over at NBC. It's going to be much worse on Alex. Right. Yeah, I mean, people have to understand it's all edited. It's all filtered through a biased channel. And then you can see him. Take your clips. Mash them up. <laughs> Wait till we release this. I mean, I mean, I actually think the fact we do this on purpose, I think waiting until everybody's kind of forgotten about it, then releasing pieces of this selective editing is going to be devastating. Leanne McAdoo is our guest. See her face via the Skype. She's on a sabbatical taking care of her grandmother and taking some time off. She'll be doing reporting for us and more, though, coming up very, very soon, but she deserves more time off. She did have the whole summer off, but she's texted me a few weeks ago and said, I'm ready to come back on, a lot of stuff going on. So it's great to have her here with us. We're gonna be launching a lot of new shows soon, so who knows, Leanne may have her own broadcast, or her own, there she is, thumbs up, her own broadcast, her own system. So a lot of exciting, a lot of exciting things happening. We always do what we say, sometimes it takes a little bit longer. But Leanne, I used to go watch Hollywood movies and kind of the old archetypes where only a few people stood up and took action and saved the day. And I always thought, oh, you know, that's to make little people feel small. But the truth is, little people doing little things together moves mountains, but it is individuals like yourself and others that do take the heat, like James O'Keefe and, and Matt Drudge and countless others, that we should celebrate because I was just talking to Rob Dew during the break. If it wasn't for InfoWars, and, and a lot of other groups and people as well, but InfoWars particularly, Hillary Clinton would be in office right now. They were sure of it. They stole six states, tried to steal five others. I keep going back to that. It's not about worshiping Trump. He's got his own problems. The next segment, we'll talk about those and get your critique. But just look at the howling anger of the corrupt elites. Why do you think they're so upset? I mean, it's just pretty incredible to me. We were seeing just the total globalist takeover. I was... I'm pretty defeated, I've got to say, up until the election night. You were getting I depressed, and I told you, Leanne, I said, don't get depressed, we're going to win. I was like, we're done, there's no way. Hillary Clinton, you know, she's got the witchcraft way of life. She probably cast a few spells and boiled a few live cats. Uh, I thought for sure she was going to be the wicked witch uh, ruling over our country. But, I, you know, it was difficult to celebrate even when Trump got in, because I knew they were not going to just allow that to happen. They weren't going to slink away quietly under their rock. Um, they, they, but I, we knew that this civil unrest was coming. We've been talking about the fact that the, that it's just right there, the boiling point for civil unrest, but how incredible that it is being uh, stoked by our elected representatives, by our media. They're celebrating this resist movement, uh, that the entertainers are now moving in and pushing this resist movement. It's just incredible to watch that they they hate our country that much that they they want us to destroy each other. And, and they're like stoking the fire. It's just incredible. Yep, that, she could have been our wicked witch in charge. And archetypally, <laughs> the wicked witch is threatened by the young goddess. If you actually study the archetypes here, that's what she's. That's why the feminists want to dominate women because it's that power they want to control and direct that. Because the way women go, so goes the society. I agree with that.
And, you know, we, we were talking a little earlier about just how they um, are editing things and splicing things together. But the thing that's so important, and they're kind of um, doing a lot of analysis on this now, your, your original tweet will go out and it gets 10,000 retweets and likes. And then you issue the correction and it gets maybe four retweets, three likes. The thing that's already stuck into the collective consciousness is that misinformation. And now it's almost getting to the point where you think the misinformation is being put out on purpose initially. And then, oh, we'll issue an, a retraction well, later. It. No that's one's going to see it. And then they don't even have to alert their readers to the fact, for instance, with the Washington Post and all of their anonymous sources, their intelligence sources say uh, that they have a $600 million contract with with these intelligence agencies. I mean, this is a obviously a conflict of interest. People aren't getting true information and our entire country is running around buck wild on this misinformation. It's, it's a pretty scary state we're in. That's right, but just because these folks have little intelligence badges and are in intelligence you know, facilities, the public has all the power they have as well and more. And that's mm -hmm. why we're going to win. America is coming back no matter what they do. We'll be back in 70 seconds, fourth hour with Leanne McAdoo. Mike's an analyst, taking a sabbatical this summer. Take care of her grandma, but she's already back with us. Can't extinguish that fire. Uh, boy, I tell you, she deserves that time off. I want to take a couple months off myself, but the fight is so intense. That's why we're getting all these other talk show hosts, all these other people on air, building a major network, because then I can not, not, not cut back being on air. My problem is I get so obsessed with it and so obsessed with it that it just takes over my mind. And then you stare into the abyss, you become the abyss. And, you know, I know Leanne would get depressed looking at all this news, knowing how real it was. But we see things starting to turn the corner. Leanne, in the four minutes we've got left, what are other points you'd like to talk about? Well, I know a lot of people are really concerned uh, with what's going to happen with the Affordable Care Act. And uh, Trump's actually tweeted, just repeal it all together. If you can't put together a replacement, just get rid of it. So, of course, this is... The, the next thing this week that he's literally going to kill millions of Americans. But it's designed um, to make the whole health care plan fail. Right. I, I mean, so the, I mean, the current plan is a scam. Well, look at what's going on uh, with this 10-month-old Charlie Gard. Now, this is the, the baby. He has a, a very rare disease, a mitochondrial disease, and his family was able to raise almost $2 million so that he could get some experimental treatment to the United States. But they have uh, the European Court of Human Rights says, no, we we're not going to let you take him to get this experimental uh, testing. We're not going to allow you to fly to the U.S. to do this. We're taking him off life support and letting your child die with dignity. That's right. They have the money, and so they want to set the precedent that they're going to not let you give medical treatment to your child. Right. And this family just wants to see if perhaps they can give some a better quality of life to their child. This is, um, you know, it well, the is. The truth a, is, Leanne, the EU is totally run by globalists. They want to block yeah. a lot of experimental stuff because here. they already know it works. They don't want the public. Most of this stuff's 20, 30 years old. I've talked to people involved in MD Anderson, you name it. They don't want these tests to get done because they know this stuff works and all these advanced technologies then will be discovered. Yeah, and this isn't even assisted suicide. I mean, this is euthanasia, and they're okay with this type of, of thing here. And I know we've talked about death panels, and we're, we're made fun of for, for that kind of thing. But this is there's so many people in this country right now that think the government needs to take care of them for everything. And just take a look at what's going on there in Europe if you want to see what that looks like. The, you give all the power to the government to take care of you. I mean, it's absurd. People well, they allow all no these chimeras and stuff, but they've got a mitochondrial treatment. They go, oh, it might mutate. But, you, right. but they're doing, oh, okay, so it might mutate. We're not putting animal genes into this baby. No, they're totally fine creating a, a baby out of the the thigh material so that the baby can create be created without a man. It's created with just two women. Or they're totally fine with creating a baby with three parents, but... You know, if you want to take your child to get some e experimental um, therapy that could improve his quality of life, no, we can't. That's too crazy. That's too far. We can gender reassign your your seven year old. You know, it hasn't even gone through puberty yet. Sure, That's it's okay. an agenda. They don't want. Cause I know about this treatment, and they have actually tested. They they don't want the stuff that's known to work, and that's what they're so scared about. They anything else is fine. Just just don't let us actually do genetic treatments that are safe and work. 
Right. And the fact that this family has raised all this money, there's so many people who are concerned and just want to help this family. Um, so now this just happened today. They they took the the, the boy off his assisted life support. So wow. we'll have to see what happens. Um, but now the family said they're, they're going to donate all that money to other families dealing with this disease so that they can try to help those families. But I mean, this they fought so hard for baby Charlie and, and to just have that government there say, nope, he needs to die. Why are they making the decision if the U.S. government will let him do it? Why would why would they say, oh, it's just incredible. Leanne McAdoo, I know you're going to be doing reports for us. More on the field coming back to Austin some too. Very exciting. You are awesome. It is so good to see your face. Good to see you too, Alex, and, every, and all the crew. I miss you guys. <laughs> well, Leanne, we miss you too, and you're awesome. Michael Cernovich is coming up with a Robert Kiyosaki bombshell. Thank you so much, Leanne.